uh, top 16 paid quarterbacks in the NFL. Now, this stuff all changes. I've said before, uh, the 201 I'm not comfortable with. Uh, Deshaun uh, Watson, I'm not comfortable with him, period, being my quarterback and Daniel Jones. 13 of the 16, you got to live with. And again, these will change. Obviously, the highest paid quarterbacks are the most recently paid quarterbacks. So, you know, Trevor Lawrence, New Deal, Jordan, to a New Deal. I think Goff's got a fairly new deal. Uh, so does Justin Herbert. So right now, uh, that's the situation you're in with quarterbacks in the NFL. I, I do think it's interesting, though. Um, we've had such a fun summer. WNBA has been a real story. The Olympics are getting huge ratings. Copa and the Euros were great. Baseball's been relatively quiet. So baseball, just now is the time you start kind of talking more baseball, and it's been overwhelmed by the Olympics. And by the time the Olympics are done, we're in, you know, you get to mid-August, that's what you talk about on shows like this. Even though starters aren't playing in the preseason, that's what everybody talks about. We are week four weeks from week zero in college football. So college football is right around the corner. It's going to be a wild college football season. So when you look at these numbers, J-Mac, all these quarterbacks and what they pay, if I said you, you get to pick two that you're uncomfortable with, I've given you my three, two of Daniel Jones and Deshaun Watson. Are there two that you're uncomfortable with? Yeah. How many of these? I would have signed 13 of these. Uh, Dak, I'd, I'd fight like hell to get it down to 52, not 61. But give me the two that you're not comfortable yeah, with. Yeah, I would say, hey, uh, Tua, I love you, man. Uh, you're great. You're coming off a good season. You're healthy again. But Patrick Mahomes is there at $45 million a year. Can't we give you that deal? And then we'll, we're able to, you know, build out an offensive line and replace the defenders we lost and we got guys injured. We're not making the playoffs next year, uh, Tua. Can you take a Mahomes-type deal? And if he wouldn't do it, like I... I know this sounds crazy. And same thing with Jordan Love. I know you love him, but I'm just saying, when you see Mahomes at 45 mil a year, and they're winning Super Bowls and in the mix every year, don't you... Isn't that what you want? Do you want to win, or do you want to make 10 million a year more than the best quarterback in the league? Yeah, I mean, I, I always had this feeling, and I'm not sure if players or agents think this way, but if I played in Florida with no state tax over the course of a five-year deal, that's $212 million. I don't, I don't have a calculator in front of me. You're probably saving $9 million a year in taxes from your average big city like New York, Chicago, or Los Angeles or Pennsylvania. So, you, and by the way, you don't need a vacation home because you live in a vacation area, Miami. You still want a vacation home. Uh, I'm just saying, two is from Hawaii. He, he's not going to, he, he probably likes the warm weather. But I always felt like Miami with free agents can, are, this is why Texas at times has had three very good basketball teams. Guys, our winter weather isn't terrible and there's no state tax. So if I was Tua, and again, it's easy for me to say, but I, I, I do think when I look at Tua, I think, I'm saving money, and I want to win more. Yeah. They still have a shaky O-line. They still don't have an edge rusher. Remember last year, their defense fell apart, so all their defense is coming off injuries. I'm not going to tell athletes yeah. to take less, but in Tua's case, I would have taken less to have more. Also, Tua's got a great advantage. He has one of the top offensive coaches in the league, so his stats are getting elevated beyond the average coach. I mean, the idea that Tua's get higher paid than like Justin Herbert and then if you toss, I'm sure some of the guys who crunch the taxes online will see Herbert. Oh, Herbert. California Lute. taxes. So he's making way less than Tua. Now, Herbert probably doesn't care. He seems a little bit different. Uh, I, by the way, I took my kids to Chargers camp. Yeah, how was that? Oh, how Amazing. Was I don't know why you weren't there. You missed out. I was busy. Yeah, obviously. Saturday um, night, I had friends. Oh. So to tell me how it was Saturday. Outstanding. The new I facility's the tremendous. I was going to go, and then I had friends. It was a lot of people, uh, a bit of a mob scene there. But um, all the Harbaugh, the Bosa, Herbert came out, signed autographs. My kids are freaking out. It was awesome. It was. Really good vibe. Did they have a, they, they, their new facility oh, now is in oh, L.A. Be, immaculate. It's brand new. It's El Segundo, yeah. technically. Um, I, I'll just point this out. I gave out fantasy advice last year. I said, Puka Nakua. I texted somebody on the Rams. They're like, Puka Nakua. I drafted him in my league. You did. Good. You did. Keep an eye on Lad McConkey for the Chargers. He's running with the ones yesterday, apparently all week. And I was talking to some people, and there's like, listen, McConkey is really clicking with Herbert, and he just looks like a dude who's getting open. He's going to catch a lot of passes. I'm not as down on this receiving core having watched him up well, close. Well, and also, if you look at Harbaugh's history, when he turned around Stanford, they didn't have a great receiving core. Doug Baldwin, maybe. When he turned around the Niners, Michael Crabtree was it. Mm -hmm. 
He won a natty with one really elite receiver in Michigan. The one position group Harbaugh wins without extreme talent is wide receiver. And that's the weak spot for the Chargers. So mm. he's got the tackles right, the run game right, the rush ends right, the physicality right. This team looks like a Harbaugh team. Little little light at receiver, tough, physical, resilient everywhere else. Hour three next. Well, don't let facts get in the way of your feelings, Jason McIntyre. Uh, reportedly, Aaron Rodgers at Jets camp had an offensive lineman step on his foot. He had six bad snaps from Tipman, the young center. He threw an interception. He was visibly upset. So the Jets offense was awful at practice. Now, I said this entire season for me comes down to their offensive line because they brought in some veteran players. They brought in a rookie. Elijah Vera Tucker's a very, very good guard, but he struggles with health. And so what happens is there are half the padded practices used to be 28. Now they're 16. So it is hard to build cohesion. When you rebuild offensive lines, it is very hard to get that right by your opening game. And your opening game is San Francisco, 3,000 miles away. That's about as bad an opening game as the Jets could pick. Other part of the country, defensive line, the best Bosa, not great. And so today, and to me, I don't care about anything else with the Jets. If the offensive line struggles to get going, that's why it's such an advantage. If you're a sports better, the two teams that have an advantage, two or three teams that have an advantage early, Detroit, great O-line play together. Atlanta, great O-line play together. Pittsburgh, keep your eye for trouble with Pittsburgh. Keep your eye early trouble with the New York Jets. You've got two, three new potential starters on the offensive line. And over the last CBA, padded practices have gone from 28 to 16. And, and that converges with another truth veterans don't play snaps in the NFL preseason anymore. The McVay factor, he stopped playing He stopped playing starters, especially high-end starters in preseason, had had no effect on winning and losing, and it's, his teams were healthier. So the Jets got a lot. It's musical chairs on the offensive line. They could be starting a rookie, a veteran, three new starters. That is not the position group. You want a bunch of new starters. I'm fine with two new corners, two running backs, you're fine. Even a young quarterback, if he's getting a majority of the snaps in camp and he'll play some in the preseason, like a Caleb Williams, a Bo Nix, uh, Michael Penix is going to play a lot of snaps in the preseason for Kirk Cousins. But it's just something to throw out there. Bad Jets practice. O-line was a mess all day. Stepping on Aaron's foot. Bad snaps, reportedly. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. Uh, he had an interception. He's visibly upset by how bad the offense is. Reaction from you? Call off the parade. It's over. July practice where Roger Scott stepped up. Come on. Okay. Like, All right. No big deal. No, you're right. The continuity will be a thing, but you got a month to work it out. You, you really worried about them against San Francisco. Maybe they look Dude, bad and lose 36-12. You get, there are only or whatever. 16 padded practices now. Think about that. You're not wearing pads most days. So I'd like that's a if you go look in the NFL since you and I have been doing this. Over the last eight to ten years, but really in the last five, I have talked more offensive line play than in my entire life. Why? Because, A, it's so bad, and there's so few great ones. Like Detroit, great. There's not another great O-line. We love Philadelphia, but they just lost the best center in a decade. So even Philly, we're like, we think they're good. They've drafted that, that unit well. But, I mean, Atlanta's good, but most people don't follow it that closely. Who's the fourth best offensive line in the league? I'm not sure there is one. The Super Bowl champs, Kansas City, don't know what's going on at tackle. Well, the Jets are, are in the mix for a top five just based on talent. Obviously, the not continuity's early. not there. It won't be good or it but won't remember, be great early. You know what? That's fine. You know who else wasn't great early? Jordan Love. He was pretty terrible for the first half of the season, right? Then he rebounds, got up to speed, the processing, everything. Why can't that happen to the Jets' offensive line? Oh, maybe because it's... Well, remember. You're being negative. Tyron Smith, left tackle, Super has not played a full season in nine years. Okay. We just need 14 games out of him. And then we got the uh, kid from Penn State to fill in against some of the bottom feeders. A rookie. It's fine. It's going to be... Come on, where's glass half full Colin on a Monday? What happened? That guy That guy got his visa. <laughs> he hopped on a plane. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so, Tua signed a big deal. Jordan Love signed a big deal over the weekend. Just a heads up, if you haven't seen it yet, 
Uh, here are the uh, top 16 paid quarterbacks in the NFL. Now, this stuff all changes. I've said before, uh, the 201 I'm not comfortable with. 